Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we will be talking about radiographic interpretation of osteomyelitis. So let's get started. So what is osteomyelitis? Very briefly, it is an inflammation of the bone. So it usually arises from the medullary cavity and can then involve the Haversian system and can then involve the uh, cortex and also the periosteum. Now how does it occur in the oral cavity? The main cause, the can be due to infection, due to infection either post-surgical infection or infection of the tooth in through which which can result in inflammation of the bone. Uh, if not that then there can be indirect hematogenous spread where the organisms can travel through the blood and cause osteomyelitis. Then Coming to the classification of osteomyelitis, there are several classifications of osteomyelitis. We will be talking about only acute, we broadly divided into acute osteomyelitis and chronic osteomyelitis. So the uh, acute osteomyelitis, all the symptoms are very severe. Whereas in chronic osteomyelitis, the symptoms are quite milder than what we see in acute osteomyelitis. So we can see severe pain, trismus, paresthesia of lower lip, elevation of temperature, regional lymphadenopathy, elevated white blood cell count and involved teeth can also become loose and we can also see exudation of pus sometimes. All these symptoms will be milder in the chronic form. Then what exactly happens in osteomyelitis? So in osteomyelitis, whenever there is inflammation, whenever there is pus collection, and so the, there is increase in the inframedullary pressure so therefore the vascular the supply is compromised and thereby relate, uh, resulting in osteomyelitis then a very important hallmark of osteomyelitis is the development of sequestra we also see uh, periosteal reaction in some types of osteomyelitis that is also seen but that is not the pathognomic feature of osteomyelitis one very very important feature is formation of sequestra so sequestra is basically the dead bone necrotic bone that is present due to ischemic injury and it is seen how does it appear radiographically so it appears more radio opaque than the surrounding structure so you will see radio opaque areas in uh, you know interspersed with radio lucent area so that is the pathognomic features now in detail coming to the radiographic features separately so for radiographic interpretation we have divided osteomyelitis into five types so the first one is acute separative osteomyelitis then we have chronic separative osteomyelitis then chronic focal sclerosing osteomyelitis then chronic diffuse sclerosing osteomyelitis and last but not the least we have Gary's osteomyelitis so the first one is acute separative osteomyelitis so it uh, in the acute stage we rarely we see very mild radiographic features it progresses rapidly and there are very less changes seen because there's a lot of pus formation and the bone destruction has not is not that much that we can appreciate in the radiograph but after one to two weeks we start seeing slight trabecular changes and diffuse light exchanges can be seen in the bone and the trabecular they slowly start to become fuzzy and indistinct and radiolucent areas begin to appear then coming to chronic separative osteomyelitis so in chronic separative osteomyelitis we can see multiple ill-defined margins we can see lot of radiolucent areas and interspersed with radio opaque areas as well which is nothing but your sequestra so now there's enough bone destruction and there is presence of necrotic bone as well so we see both radio opaque and radio lucent areas and therefore we see a moth eaten appearance in chronic separative osteomyelitis then coming to chronic focal sclerosing osteomyelitis so as the name suggests, it is focal and sclerosing. So we see well some circumscribed radio opaque mass of sclerotic bone with distinct borders. Because the word focal is being used, so we see distinct borders surrounding or extending 
in one root or in at the apex of one root or both the roots. It is also known as condensing ostitis. So we can see a tooth which is pulpally involved uh, radiographically. We can see that and we can see there's widening of periodontal ligament space and there is intact lamina dura C and it can uh, overlap. It can look like focal cemento osseous dysplasia, but there will be absence of radio lucent border which is present in focal cemento osseous dysplasia then coming to uh, chronic uh, diffuse sclerosing osteomyelitis so chronic diffuse os uh, sclerosing osteomyelitis we see diffuse patchy sclerosis of bone which is often described as cotton wool appearance and the lesion may be extensive and it may sometimes be bilateral. Sometimes bilateral involvement of both maxilla and mandible may be seen and the border between sclerosis and normal bone is often indistinct. We had seen distinct borders in chronic focal sclerosing osteomyelitis where the name suggests it is diffuse. So we see cotton wool appearance in chronic diffuse sclerosing osteomyelitis. Then coming to chronic osteomyelitis with proliferative periostitis. So it mostly you can see a carious tooth opposite the bony hard mass and when we take an occlusal radio usually seen in children and because in individuals the periosteum is loosely attached and what happens whenever there's lot of inflammation it just collects subperiosteally it elevates the periosteum and it actually induces the periosteum to produce one more layer of uh, bone outside the periosteum. So basically what happens in Gary's osteomyelitis, how the bone formation takes place. So what happens in children, this, this suppose imagine this is the ramus, this is the periosteum that we are talking about, the outer layer. So what happens in children, this is, this is loosely attached to the outer surface of the bone. So what happens whenever there's inflammation, there's a lot of pus collection subperiosteally. So subperiosteally, whenever there is periosteally, there is pus collection. So whenever there's pus collection periosteally, because it is loosely attached, this is pushed away. This is slightly pushed away. And then after that, after pushing away of this periosteum, it's in because this periosteum has greater osteogenic potential in children. Because of that, it actually induces the periosteum to produce one layer of bone. This is a bone which is like a this is the composition is that of the cortical bone of this layer. So one layer of uh, one layer of cortical bone forms here. Now, once the inflammation reaches the chronic stage, there is no more formation of this uh, layer of bone. So, we see one layer and this is seen as a radio opaque line in the radiograph. Now, suppose the infection is dormant for quite a bit of time and suddenly there is increase of infection after some time. Whenever there is again an acute exacerbation of infection, during that time again there is pus collection subperiosteally and the periosteal is again pushed and it induces again this will be pushed here and it induces to produce the periosteum to produce one more layer of bone. Therefore, we see, uh, we see that so many layers of bone are formed every time when there is any kind of acute exacerbation seen. So therefore we see this onion skin kind of appearance in Gary's osteomyelitis. So that brings us to the end of the video. If you have any doubts or queries, you can leave a message in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you.